Hey guys, I'm Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor, and we're going to be painting a little school chalkboard sign. So the center part of this is going to be chalkboard paint so that you can make your own little sign. And so this would be a great teacher gift. It would look really cute on your wreaths because you could customize the message on the center. It would also be really great for those of you who have little kids at home because you could write first day of school on the front and then you could like erase it and put last day of school for your photos at the beginning and end of the school year. So we've got cute little crayons down here and a little pennant banner up here. And we're gonna be painting um, the outside with a turquoise polka dot pattern and the center with some chalkboard. The outer part of this, we're gonna paint with this color here. It's my favorite color in all the world. It's These are all deco art Americana matte acrylics. This is called uh, bluegrass green. So we're gonna be painting the outer part of the frame this color, because like I said, it's my favorite color. So any if I'm ever in doubt about what color to paint something, this is the color I choose. So we're just gonna go around here and paint all this area with the turquoise. And then we'll go back and add all the details in just a moment. And if you're a little bit worried about, you know, maybe you've never painted before or you've never tried this, I want you to rest assured that this is something that anyone can learn to do. You do not need to be an experienced painter um, to be able to paint door hangers. This is definitely um, a very forgiving art form, um, especially seeing as you could sand over it and start over, or you could just paint over it and start over. And so there are many women who join my membership and they've never painted before. And so we take them through a beginner's course before they even really get started with anything else. And it pretty much just explains all the different um, things you need to know about painting door hangers before you get started, like what supplies you need, what kind of brushes we recommend, and what kind of paint is the best, what kind of wood you should buy, and all of that kind of different stuff. And then we even teach you how to cut your own wood shapes. So um, the one of the number one questions I get asked about the Painters Clubhouse membership is, do you, um, does it come with the wood blanks mailed to us? And no, the membership is $37 a month. That does not include the wood blanks, but it does include two of our printable templates that you can use for our tutorials that we give you every month. And those you can print out at home. And we have a tutorial that shows you how to cut them yourself. This is gonna keep your costs down. It's gonna keep it a very affordable membership for you because you'll be able to cut your own shapes and it's gonna give you a little bit more creative freedom also. So um, we would love to empower you and teach you how to use the jigsaw or perhaps a scroll saw. Even people who are wheelchair bound can use a scroll saw. It's almost like operating a sewing machine. So I have confidence that you all can learn how to do this regardless of whether, um, you know, no matter what age you are or uh, what your abilities are, this is something anyone can learn to do if you have the desire to do so. Since it's, our, it's drying so quickly, these, this door hanger is, cut, or not door hanger, this little shape, it's not technically a door hanger because of its size, is cut from quarter inch MDF. That is what all of the blanks that I sell in my shop at shopdoorhangers.com, that's what they are all cut from. So um, if you order from me, this is the kind of wood you will be getting. It is very smooth and easy to paint on. Um, and it has these really nice laser cut edges. So now that I've gone around the whole outside of the design, I'm gonna take a real small round tip brush and go in between these little crayons, just carefully dragging my brush between the crayons to kind of separate them and put some paint in there. Doesn't matter if you get over the lines just a little bit. Like I said, this is a very forgiving art form. You can always paint over it later if you mess up. There we go. So now we've got our little crayons separated. And all we have to do is um, paint the crayons, the banner, and then the center. But we're gonna let this dry for just a moment and then we will do some polka dots out here. So now let's paint the little banner here. We're gonna start with these colors. I've already got the colors all chosen ahead of time. I've got yellow. We're gonna put some in each of my little egg cartons and we don't need much. So I'm just putting about a dime size amount, orange. We're gonna hope and pray there's some of this green left because I love this color of green. <laughs> it's almost gone, but I think we have enough to do what we need to do with it. Um, and then purple. Okay, 
Come on, purple. There we go. And then this is Peony Pink, which is another favorite color of mine that I'm almost out of. <laughs> I'm running out of paints. I need um, this lockdown to be over so that I can go to the store and get some more paint. Okay, so let's start with our pink, and we're going to just color um, the first one pink. The second one will be yellow, green, blue, purple, orange, and then pink again. So I'm just going to dab that one with pink, and then we'll do this crayon pink. So I kind of assigned them colors. And so that keeps me from rinsing my brush out 500 times in between each and every little piece of this. It's going to save us a little bit of time. Okay, and then let's put another coat of pink while this, since it's drying so quickly. And we'll just do two coats of each color. I think that will be enough. I'm a pretty messy painter, so don't, you know, don't worry about if you are too. Because um, once we're done, we're going to take little paint pens and clean all of this up. So I'm all outside the lines up in here. But again, we're going to be painting the inside part of this with chalkboard paint. So that's going to cover any kind of little mistakes we make. Okay, the next color of the pendant is yellow. So we're going to do that one yellow and that one. And then this little crayon, crayon will be yellow. This is a really nice bright yellow. I really like it. I'll be sad when I run out of this paint color too. <laughs> so if some of you guys right now, are you like, are you doing lots of crafting time while you're home? Um, if you're having to self quarantine, I know myself personally, I have done more painting since this coronavirus stuff hit than anything else. And so um, it's a great time to learn a new skill. It's a great time to kind of like work on self development and so if you guys have been wanting to learn something new, there hasn't been a better time. This is, this is the perfect time for it. Um, I personally have signed up myself for a couple of different classes of things that I wanted to learn how to do because um, I've got more time on my hands right now than I normally would. Granted, I am having to homeschool the kids right now, but um, that's really only taking about two and a half, three hours of our day and then they're done. So it just seems like because we're not having to rush off to soccer and baseball practice and things like that we've got more time to focus on ourselves what did you say the name of that yellow was this is a patio paint by deco art that's what they call it patio paint and the color is sunshine yellow it's a really nice bright popping yellow and it covers pretty good it probably will need another coat here in a little bit after it dries but we're going to go ahead with um the other colors and let that dry a bit so let's do green next we'll do green in that one Green in this one, and then green in this crayon. This is like a really nice, like, Kelly green or a John Deere green if you're from the south. I tend to color, the, I tend to call this color John Deere green a lot. I, lo I just love the little crayons at the bottom of this. They're so cute. Tiny little crayons. And then starting in the month of April, I'm going to start giving out one business tip a month. Um, we don't normally teach business in the Painters Clubhouse, but there are so many of our women who have been painting for a little while now, and they've started businesses of their own. They didn't really intend to, but you know how it is. Like you post pictures of your of things you make online, and then somebody's like, oh my goodness, did you make that? And before you know it, they um, they want to know if you're selling them. And so you kind of have an accidental business. And so that's kind of the way it has been for a lot of these ladies. They didn't intend on starting businesses, but now they have them. And uh, they're so excited because they never expected it. Um, so that's really fun. But we do two door hanger tutorials every single month in the clubhouse. One is always taught by me and one is taught by a guest painter. And um, my videos are almost always like live like this, only you're not seeing my face, you're seeing my uh, project down below the camera. And then um, of course everything is uploaded to a membership area and you have access to it for as long as you're a member and you don't have to catch them live. You can go and watch them on replay at any time. Um, and like I said, the door hanger tutorials come with a template for you to cut your own shape, which is really nice because um, Goodness knows, if we all had to draw these ourselves, they would all look so 
completely different. And some people are so intimidated by the thought of having to draw something that it kind of stops them in their tracks and they don't make progress forward. Okay, the next color is orange. So I thought this would be really cute. Like, I don't, do you guys make wreaths on this page? I think you do. Um, but either way, even if you don't, I thought this would be a fun little sign to like decorate your home when it's time for school to start back or to maybe use as a sign. It's going to be a chalkboard sign so that you could write like first day or last day of school on it. That's what I'm going to use mine for. Um, so that when my little Charlie starts kindergarten in the fall, I will be able to like write first day of school on there and she can hold the sign and I can take a picture of her. And then at the end of the year, we can do it again and see how much she's grown. Okay, so this is what we've got done so far. Let me show you how messy it is up close. See, we didn't stay inside the lines very good, but it doesn't matter because once we get through all of the other details with the paint pens and things, it's not gonna matter. So let's do our polka dots next. I'm gonna use these little sponge pouncers from the Walmart. We're gonna mix a little bit of white in with the background color so that we make a lighter shade of the same color. And that will be the color we do our polka dots. I'm mixing with the bottom end of a paintbrush, by the way. I like that way better because it doesn't get the paint all gunked up in the bristles. And then I wipe it off on a paper, uh, on a paper towel. Okay, so daub in the paint. And then the trick is to get some of the excess off so you don't have paint just gooped on there. So now when you daub, I want you to push down, do a gentle twist, and then lift up. And you can kind of daub halfway on and halfway off where the chalkboard area is gonna go because we know that black will cover that just fine. So just do your little dots and work your way around. I don't even think I'm gonna have to dip my sponge pouncer again. One daub is gonna do it. We'll do one kind of halfway down here. Okay, look how cute that turned out. Whoops, sorry, it's upside down for you guys. So now all we have to do is paint the background in the middle and then add the details. So let's get some chalkboard paint. This is DecoArt chalkboard paint. You can get this kind of stuff at a craft show or craft store. We're just gonna squeeze it out and then we're gonna get a flat tip brush and we're just gonna start applying our chalkboard paint. Now, if you were gonna put a clear coat of sealer on here, I would recommend you do that before you put your chalkboard paint on. Either that or use a brush and apply it around the chalkboard painted area. Don't put your sealer on top of your chalkboard paint because it will make it to where your chalkboard paint isn't as effective. Now, the only tricky part you're gonna have is in between these little flags so if you need to, you can get a round tip brush or something and just go in between them. I'm turning my flat tip brush straight up and down and just putting it in there and then pulling it out. I'm placing it at the corner and then pulling out of the corner and then filling in the rest of the area. And then of course go back, like there were a few brush strokes right through here. So this stuff dries pretty quickly. So I'm going through and smoothing my brush strokes out as quickly as I can so that I don't have some crazy looking brush strokes. It's also thinner than your regular paint. So you may have a little bit of dripping going on if you're not careful, try not to get too much on your brush. Let's do a little bit up in this corner. And this will probably require a second coat because chalkboard paint is not very thick. Like I said, it's very thin. And sometimes it can be a little bit transparent if you don't get it applied thick enough. And right now, we, me painting over these little polka dots, the polka dots were still just slightly wet, so it's kind of smudging and smearing through those. And I'm about to get the polka dots on my arm. I'm concentrating, can you tell I got quiet? <laughs> If I, if I stop talking, it's because I'm concentrating. I'm trying not to mess myself up because I'm trying to squeeze between these little crayons. Get it exactly where I want it. Okay, I got too much paint up in here, so I'm gonna take some of it and pull it out in different directions because I had too much paint on my brush. Okay, we've got the basic 
area covered here. So now we can go back and kind of do a second coat, but I probably need to dry it first in between. Okay, and then I need a little tiny round tip brush to go in this little crack, this little corner behind the crayons right here. This is a really tiny liner brush. I'm just getting in here and painting that area. Now let's take our black and do one final coat of chalkboard paint. I'm gonna try to apply this coat just a little bit thinner than the last coat that I did to minimize brush strokes. Do you use the same name brand for all of your paint? Um, pretty much. I started out, Lynn, using apple barrel paint from Walmart just because I live in a somewhat of a rural town and we do not have Hobby Lobbies or Michaels close by. And so I used apple barrel paint for a long time because that was uh, the cheapest paint I could find like at Walmart and whatnot. And that works. But um, I'm now an ambassador for Deco Art Paint. And so they prefer that I only use their paint. But I have come to love and appreciate the quality of their paints above all else. And so that is why I now choose to exclusively use Deco Art Paint. Um, it's not just because I'm an ambassador for them. I just really truly believe in the quality of their paint. Um, it's more consistent than, than the cheaper brands. It's more predictable. You can always get like the same coverage, the same color. Sometimes in apple barrel paints when I would buy them, they would be, some, some bottles would be like liquidy thin, like, like super thin. And then other bottles would be weirdly thick. And I'm like, what is going on with this? Like, why, why is this batch different from the last? And so it was a little bit unpredictable, but, um, I've never had that problem with the deco art paint. Every bottle I've ever gotten was just like the last bottle. And so I just love it. It's a good quality. It's a good thickness of paint. It covers really well. Um, I love the color selection that they offer. Okay, so now we've got two coats on our chalkboard. Isn't that looking nice? And we're gonna dry this, and then we're gonna go and do all of our cute little details on everything else, and then we'll be done. Okay, looks pretty good. I do see a little spot. Oh, I may have to get the original paint color out where I did not get it. Oh, goodness, I almost made a mess where I did not get it covered as good down in here, right next to that pencil. So I was covering that up. Sometimes until you dry it, you can't see little things like that. Okay, these are the paint pens that I love and adore. They're Posca, sorry, Posca paint pens. They are on Amazon and a set of six. You can get two black and two white of the different sizes in small, medium, and large in that set. Um, and so I love using these to do little details. So I'm gonna outline our frame here with the white. We're just gonna go around and create kind of a border to make that stand out. It might require two coats to get it to cover really good, but we'll just start with that right there. See, that really made that frame stand out even more. And so let me pump this paint pen just a little bit, get some fresh paint down in there. And then we're gonna go around one more time. Because even though y'all can't see it, I can, and the color uh, needs just another coat. It was just a little bit thin. Anytime I need to paint a nice straight line, I always rotate the door hanger or the project to where I'm pulling the paintbrush or the marker toward my body. That makes such a big difference um, in how straight I'm able to paint. Okay, now switching to the largest paint pen. Where'd it go? Here it is, in black. We're gonna do an outline around the outside edge. Sometimes I like to do a couple little dots and then follow around the edge like this. Stop, do a couple dots, and then go around the edge again. Stop and do a dot. And this just kind of pulls the whole project together. We'll do a couple dots here. 
and on around. There we go. And then now we get to do our details on the inside of our little, um, of our project. Okay. So now we can go down here and we can add, actually, I think this one's probably a little too thick. I'm going to get the skinniest one. So there's three sizes. Like I said, a small, medium, and large. I'm going to switch to the smallest because the details on these little crayons are going to be so tiny. And see, that's a brand new paint pen. It doesn't have any black paint in it. So we got to pump and prime the pen. There we go, till the paint starts flowing. I'm just gonna let it kind of drip off the excess on my paper towel before I get going, because I don't want it to drip on my project, which these pens have never dripped on me. I've never had that problem. So if you have that problem, it could be because you pumped too much or something like that. So just let it kind of do its thing. Okay, so now we can go along the edges of our little crayons and add some cute little details. So I'm pretty much just tracing the details on these little crayons because they have the designs already laser etched in the surface and it makes it super easy to just add your details back in. And details are really what make a design really special in my opinion. I really like this really skinny paint pen. It's like really precise. You could even go in with like a slightly lighter color of green, lighter color of each of these crayons and add just a little bit of detail there too if you wanted to. This is turning out so cute. Just wait till we get all the white details on there as well. Okay, so here's our crayons. Look up close how cute the crayons look. And then down here, we're gonna, or up here, we're gonna do some on our pennant banner. I'm not gonna be nearly as precise about it. I want it to look just a little bit whimsical. And because I know some of those details would disappear into the chalk paint, so I just quickly did little trace to the little pennants. And then I'm gonna trace, actually I'm gonna use the fatter paint pen to trace the line that they hang from. There we go. Ta-da! Now get your smallest paint pen, the white one. And we're gonna go back in and add some little details on our pennants, some little highlights. It's kinda like a squiggle. And then you can add some like on the tops of your crayons. There we go. All right, we are done with this project. Look how cute this is. And now we can use our chalk and we can write first day of school or last day of school, however you, you know, whichever day you're celebrating. But how cute would this be having your kid hold this up or giving this to a teacher for them to use for first day of school pictures? Or she could erase this throughout the year and put Miss Smith's class or something like that. So it's a fun little project. You could even attach it to a wreath if you wanted to. All right, so if you guys enjoyed this and you wanna go grab one of these wood blanks from my shop and create your own or get a template to create your own if you're crafty with a jigsaw or a scroll saw, you can go to shopdoorhangers.com and do that. Bye, y'all. Have a good day.